you want to spend time in the presence of eternal father if you want to have the opportunity to walk daily with the holy spirit in this life you have to do it through a relationship with jesus and that's what jesus was laying out for them he is that gatekeeper that door he is the way for us to find our salvation and as john 14 6 says as i quoted a few months ago he is the only way because when Jesus himself says, I am the way, the truth, truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except by me. Now the Sunday Sermon with Lee Farmer, pastor of Cone Baptist Church, Heathsville, Virginia. So the first question I kind of want to ask you this morning, do you ever have to be reminded of anything? If anybody in this room has lost your car keys in the last month, raise your hand. Two or three times. And what I hate about it is when I say to my wife, I've lost my car keys, you know what she says to me next? Where did you leave them? <laughs> Don't you love that one? If I knew where I left them, they wouldn't be lost, right? But sometimes we need some reminders from time to time about our journey of faith. And what I'm going to read for us today in John chapter 10 is exactly what the gospel writer is teaching us about this invitation that you and I have to abundant life. And it only comes one way way. If you want to read a book of the Bible and you've never had an opportunity just to sit down and read, I always tell people, start with the Gospel of John. Read it from start to finish. It is an amazing text about how much God loves us. And sometimes we need that reminder. So if you don't have anything you're not reading right now, you're not currently up on the latest book, whatever, take some time. I challenge you to read the Gospel of John. But today, let's look in John chapter 10, as we see this incredible reminder of an invitation given to us by the Lord to follow Him and only Him. Keep that in mind as we read this together. So here's what's happening in a little background. Jesus is addressing a group of religious leaders. And you know, every time He sort of addresses them, they always cause problems. They're always asking questions. They're always, you know, coming up with the wrong assumptions. And they're struggling with what Jesus is trying to teach them through his actions and his words. And so today, as he's addressing this, he's sort of putting them in their place. And so John chapter 1, John chapter 10, beginning in verse 1, Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, because he's addressing the Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. Some of your Bibles say sheep pen, some say sheep fold. So keep in mind that all this is, is a place where the sheep could gather at night and be protected, where they could be safe. It could be made out of walls, made out of brush or stone or in the sides of a cave, whatever it may be. It was a place where the shepherd would bring the sheep in to protect them in the night. And so what he simply is saying to them and reminding them of the importance of this is that anyone who enters in any other way except through the right way has come to destroy, has come to be a thief and to challenge And in those days, even like we have today, there were many people running around, false teachers, that were trying to teach people that there was another way, that they didn't have to follow in Jesus' footsteps. These people were teaching that there was more than one Messiah, and we know that not to be the truth. And they were also finding out that these individuals who were teaching them these things were only teaching them for the purpose of trying to destroy these people. And so Jesus is relating it by saying the Pharisees in this point are like those thieves. See, they not only were the religious leaders, but they ruled over the people and they taught them the wrong ways of doing things. Verse 2, the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. And we know that this is a reference, of course, to Jesus Christ. How do we know that? Well, if you go back and read the entirety of the Old Testament, we've been doing that on Wednesday nights. If you go back and look at the Old Testament, Prophecy after prophecy are given to provide the fact that Jesus Christ was coming and when He came, He was going to be the way, the truth, and the life. And no one would come to the Father except by Him, John 14, 6. And that's what we see here. Jesus has come the proper way. He has come into the gate. He was sent by God to seek and to save. Verse 3, the gatekeeper opens the gate for Him. The sheep listen to His voice. He calls His own sheep by name, and he leads them out. So the gatekeeper or the doorkeeper there, we believe, is a reference to the Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit is that one that allows us to come in into the presence of Jesus Christ. And if we're believers in Jesus, if we put our faith and trust in Jesus, then we understand what it means to be called by name, to be called by Him. Most of you, if you're into religious stuff, so to speak, know that this past week, uh, was the, the week before while we were away, 
uh, evangelist and minister Charles Stanley passed away. And many of you have read a lot of his materials over the years. He's been the pastor at First Baptist Church Atlanta. He's been a great uh, promoter of the faith and an encourager, helps people grow and disciple. And they were showing some clips of a lot of his sermons. And one of his sermons, he was talking about what it means. And he said he always hated the statement when somebody said, your number's up. He said it always bothered him about that. Because he, he said it was more important to understand that when it's time for us to be called home, that God calls us by name. That we're not just a number to Him. We're a name. That He knew us before we were born. And that He knows us now. And that each one of you, each one of us, is so very, very important to Him. And as Scripture says, He leads us and He calls us by name. He calls us and He leads us in to faith and leads us out into freedom. And that's through Jesus Christ. Verse 4. When He's brought us out all His own, He goes on ahead of them and His sheep will follow Him because they know His voice. So when you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, the Word of God says when you open your heart and you invite Jesus in to be your Lord and Savior, the Word teaches us that the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit becomes, a, you become a dwelling place for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes and dwells within you. And then the, the, the opportunity that we now have is to then follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And that takes practice. That's why we call it practicing our faith. But learning to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit is so very important. The more time we spend with God, not just on Sundays or on Wednesdays, but the more time we spend with Him during the week in prayer, in studying His Word, the more opportunities we're going to be reinforced to understand what it means to truly follow Jesus. And to be able to recognize His name and His voice when He calls us. And that's what He's basically teaching here now. As we grow in our faith and we grow by learning and by spending more time and by being discipled, that gives us the opportunity to learn more and more about His direction for our life and for His calling on our lives. You see, Jesus gives us, through our relationship with Him, a discerning ability. Now, I don't mean it to, we're not saying a judgmental ability. What we're saying is a discerning ability. That gives us the opportunity to know the difference between right and wrong, to know what He calls us to be about, what He calls us to do, and how to follow. Verse 6, Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees didn't understand what He was telling them. So as He's explaining this whole operation of the sheep and the shepherd and the gate and the, the safety and the security of coming into this place through the gate, and then Jesus bringing us and calling us by name and leading us out, the Pharisees are scratching their heads because they didn't understand the illustration that he was trying to express to them because they didn't truly understand who Jesus was. And that's part of the problem. So Jesus changed his direction. In verse 7 it says, Therefore Jesus said again, Verily, truly I tell you that I am the gate for the sheep. So Jesus is making it personal. I am the gate for the sheep. And he tells them that he is the gate. He is that door that allows the sheep to come into the presence of our eternal Father. It's through that relationship with Jesus. We are invited in to a relationship with Him when He calls upon our name. Verse 8, All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep, they have not listened to them. Verse 9, For I am the gate, and whoever enters through me will be, what's that word? Saved. Read that one again. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. Jesus is telling the Pharisees, look, okay, I tried to give you an illustration. I was trying to paint this beautiful picture and you didn't get it. So let me let's, let's just lay it out. I am the way. And that's what Jesus is saying. I am the way. You want to spend time in the presence of eternal Father? If you want to have the opportunity to walk daily with the Holy Spirit in this life, you have to do it through a relationship with Jesus. And that's what Jesus was laying out for them. He is that gatekeeper, that door. He is the way for us to find our salvation. And as John 14, 6 says, as I quoted a few months ago, He is the only way. Because when Jesus Himself says, I am the way, the truth, truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except by Me. Now folks, we don't claim that Scripture to be mean to everybody else. We claim that Scripture because that's how important it is that we get the Word out. That's how important it is that we let other people know that we've found safety and security and salvation in our relationship with Jesus. And it should desire and motivate us now to make sure that those around us have had that same opportunity. That we might have the opportunity to lead someone else 
into that saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. This morning in our, our early Bible study, one of the things that the speaker talked about when he was quoting from Luke chapter 15 was he talked about all of heaven rejoicing when one lost sinner comes to know Christ. When one person repents of their sin, all of heaven rejoices. Can you imagine what that must be like? Of all of heaven to get excited about one person coming to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, coming to know who Jesus Christ absolutely is. When you have that relationship with Jesus, you have the opportunity to go into faith. You have that opportunity to come into worship with Him and then to be able to go out from this place or out from your worship or your prayer closet and go out into the world and to share Jesus. And Scripture also says that in Him we'll find pasture. Those of you who grew up on a farm know how important a good pasture is because it provides nutrition, it provides rest, it provides peace, it provides those things that we need, and we find pasture in our relationship with Jesus Christ, spiritual pasture. And what that simply means is when you have that relationship with Jesus Christ, here's the opportunity that you have to come into Him and to be encouraged in your faith, to find the grace and mercy of the Lord, and to love Him, to be able to love others, and to share the good news with other folks. Now, not everybody's going to believe. We know that. But our commitment to Jesus demands that we understand that he has invited us in and then it's now our job to invite others into Jesus through love and compassion not through beating him over the head or or scolding him into a relationship but just simply loving them to Jesus and that's what he encourages us to do here today to find that spiritual peace that nourishment that we need that we may encourage others verse 10 the thief comes only to steal to kill and destroy. And then Jesus makes it very personal when he says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Or some of your Bibles may say to have abundant life. That's why Jesus came. That you and I would have the opportunity to know that life is full of difficulties and storms. And that song that Kim sang a few moments ago, the storms may rage. They're going to rage, folks. You don't have to go very many days in life to face a storm, do we? There's going to be some challenge or some difficulty that's going to come our way. But in that relationship, we find strength, we find peace and the ability to continue to move forward. And what he encourages us to think about today is that Jesus came not to abandon us. You know, we talk about John 3, 16 all the time. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And I love that verse, but I always follow it up with the next one. Verse 17, for he did not come to condemn, but that through him we might be saved. The invitation for us this morning is simply this. Jesus has given us clear direction, a clear path for us. And it's through that personal relationship with Jesus. And I just want to encourage all of you this morning to think about your journey with Jesus, to think about your opportunity to serve him each and every day. If you've put your faith and trust in Jesus, if you've called on Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, remember, He's called you by name. He knows you. And He desires to be a part of your life every day. Sometimes we as Christians get so focused on heaven and the joys of being in heaven, we forget that that's not all there is to the life of living the Christian life. It's about an abundant life here on this life every day. To be able to walk in the presence of the Holy Spirit and to know that even on my worst day, Even in my weakest time, God is there and God is strong and that God has called you. There are going to be others that are going to come along from time to time. There are going to be other ways that are going to be introduced. But folks, we as Christians have been given an incredible picture of love when Jesus gave every single thing he had for you, all that he has, all that he was given for you on that cross, that you might have the opportunity to have abundant life in him that we might have the opportunity to live a life of mercy and grace and joy and love and to share that with the folks around us every day. The thief will come. Why? Not for good reasons. To steal, to steal, to kill and destroy. But in Christ, we have life. And that life can be abundant. And what I want to challenge you to think about this morning is your life in Christ. And I pray that you've had the opportunity to open your heart and to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And if He's calling you to that today, then after the service, I hope you'll just grab me by the hand and let's pray. 
that you might have the opportunity to come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, to find this life, to be called by name. Or maybe you've been a Christian for a while and you just need to get excited again about your faith. Last Sunday we had the opportunity, we were literally, and I'm not kidding, deep, deep in the forest in the Smoky Mountains. And we were, all, and we were watching you guys and texting a few of you saying, I see you at church, I see you at church. We were worshiping with you online. And we were in this place where we were just seeing the abundance and the, the ama amazing creativity of God all around us. And we were missing all of you. But we were celebrating in faith. And we were realizing that as you were here worshiping, we were worshiping there with you. And we were realizing that our focus, even though we were separated by 500 and something miles, our focus was on God, on Jesus Christ. And on the opportunity to live in a walk with Him daily. Folks, I want to encourage you today. The thing that we get to benefit from in this life through our faith is that we have the opportunity to walk daily with Jesus and to find blessings. Now, our blessings are always different. Sometimes our blessings are incredible and they're big, and sometimes our blessings will come as a simple whisper from someone who becomes that incredible source of encouragement because they come up beside you and they say something in your ear or they say something to you specifically and maybe they don't even realize that God's using them to, to be that source of encouragement to you. Maybe you are being called to be that source of encouragement to somebody else. We have the opportunity to walk in abundant life, to celebrate the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And the Scripture says to us this morning, if you... Accept the invitation from Jesus. You open your hearts and receive Him as Lord and Savior. You'll be saved. It doesn't say you might be. It doesn't say there's a good possibility that you will be. The Word of God says you will be saved. And that salvation is for all of eternity. I hope you know this morning how much He loves you. I know sometimes life is difficult. And sometimes we find ourselves wondering and questioning. Well, so did folks in the Bible. Look at Job. Look at the Psalms. Look at the book of Lamentations where people were questioning and wondering. But every time God was there. And God was, as they say, God was on time every time. He encouraged. He strengthened. He renewed. And He wants to do the same for us today. So how's your walk with Jesus today? Would you bow your heads for just a moment, please? These incredible scriptures today just reminded us of the importance of accepting that call from Christ. And that He is that gatekeeper. That He calls us into a relationship with Him that allows us then to be in a relationship with our Heavenly Father. But I'm praying today that each of you just stop for a moment right where you are. Look into your own hearts. And I pray that you've had the opportunity to accept Jesus because He has reached out His arms and He loves you. And I want to assure you that if you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, as the Bible has told us this morning, you will be saved. Man, what a blessing that is. Do you need to call upon Him today to be your Lord? Do you simply need to pray, Lord, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior today. Forgive me of my sins. And then that's when the journey begins. That journey of obedience and devotion to Him. Christian, are you as excited about your faith today as you were when you got saved? Do you recognize today that God is still doing a work in your life today just as He did when you were saved? Maybe your prayer just needs to be, Lord, revive those fires in me again that I can get excited about my faith that I know you're still working and that you still have a plan for me. Whatever it is He's doing in your life, let Him do it today. Would you please answer His call? Gracious God, thank you so very much for this day, for our time to come and to worship and to praise and to celebrate and to be encouraged. And thank you for reminding us of the power that we can have through a relationship with Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. 
that we have the opportunity to live an abundant life here and to have the guaranteed salvation of our souls for all of eternity. God, I pray that if someone here today needs to make that decision for you, that they will open their hearts and before they leave this place today, we will have the opportunity to celebrate with them. I pray they'll catch me after the service. and Let's truly celebrate your work in their life today. Lead us now, we pray, in this time of invitation. In Jesus' precious name, we pray these things. Amen. You've just heard the Sunday Sermon with Lee Farmer, pastor of Cone Baptist Church, Heathsville, Virginia, online at conebaptist.com. That's C-O-A-N-Baptist.com.